Thank you, Max, and uh, thank you to uh, all of you uh, for being here. Um, I'm very grateful for uh, this opportunity to present this uh, um, project uh, idea that uh, we have uh, developed with uh, about 40 international uh, um, development uh, partners. And uh, it's a new concept, uh, and it's a very ambitious uh, project, in fact, um, which in, in substance uh, is the development of a, a business uh, ecosystem that uh, will uh, enable uh, businesses and enterprises to focus equally on uh, economic principles, so basically economic uh, sustainability, um, human and social rights, uh, environmental, system in, uh, environmental sustainability. The, the models that we are planning to develop uh, um, uh, will be in a framework uh, uh, built upon human rights and globally accepted uh, ethical principles uh, with a substantial uh, flexibility uh, for this model uh, to be tailored to specific uh, uh, circumstances, uh, so specific uh, environments, let's say, legal and economic and, and, and um, cultural uh, uh, environments uh, in both developed and uh, developing countries. Uh, the name that we are using uh, so far is uh, um, human-centered business model. Um, so the human uh, is at the center of, of the enterprise. And uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this project, uh, uh, one of the elements, as I was mentioning, is the, um, the inclusion of uh, ethical and, uh, uh, and moral uh, principles. And uh, this is where uh, my colleague and, and uh, friend uh, uh, Pierre Bio um, has developed uh, a, a background, let's say, uh, study on what are the um, principles uh, uh, that are shared by the 14 largest uh, um, religions in the world. So I'm glad to pass the microphone to Pierre, who will uh, talk about this, because the, the conclusions are very, very interesting. Thanks, Pierre. Yeah, you can grab one of these. Yeah, thank you. It should be on. It is on. Thank you, Max, and thank you, Marco. Um, when we've been thinking um, uh, together with Marco about the development, uh, the potential development of this human center business model, um, the first thing which may happen in, in anyone's mind was how the uh, international public law, which is existing for the past 100 years, and which has been developed by international organization, intergovernmental uh, organization, is uh, preventing the concept of corruption in business, the concept of extortion in business, the concept of bribery, anti-bribery -bri in business. And therefore, we've been uh, searching the linkage between these, if the existing uh, international public law and some ethic principles. And going further, we just acknowledge that most of the religions in the world were dealing about this matter and preaching to their believers that those concepts should be prohibited. But that was only, I should say, a guess, because uh, some of us are believers some of us are not believers. So what is, in our view, the exact proportion of people who are believers and people who are not? And according to statistics, we've been uh, absolutely surprised to discover that uh, 14 major religions in the world were existing, which were covering and which are covering today 75% of the world population. And these are 14 different religions. And those 14 religions are developing concepts which are exactly a mirror of what the international public law, especially on development, has been 
implementing over the past 100 years. And the clear message from those religions is prohibition of those practices. That's, that is the, 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 the first reason about this, uh, this study. I, I, <clears throat> thank you very much. I mean, that's an incredible correlation to see that the moral and ethic values that are represented through the religions are also the moral and ethic values that should be incorporated in, in, in business models. Yeah. Um, yesterday, with the food insecurity session, we, we heard that uh, there's a lot of corruption and a lot of illegitimate products in the food industry, in the food market. And it was actually quite shocking to hear how many of those products are toxic to human consumption. So would this be an example of how to apply the human-centered business model to prevent so. that kind of infiltration of illegal substances within a supply chain, within an industry? I, I think in terms of ethics, I, I may answer in terms of Pra practicalities, uh, Marco, you may, you may answer first, and I, I will answer second. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, the, the idea is uh, really to rethink uh, 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 the way of doing business. And of course, uh, this kind of model, uh, uh, it will be um, an option uh, for uh, you know, uh, an entrepreneur. Um, and basically, right now, there, there are only two main options is the uh, for-profit that, uh, you know, um, has a, as an objective the profit maximization and the no-profit, mostly. Uh, the social enterprise is a kind of um, uh, galaxy of very different uh, um, uh, realities. So this model instead is, is, is a third way. Um, and uh, the model that we're going to, to develop uh, is uh, an ecosystem. So it's not just uh, the, the legal uh, form for, uh, for this um, way of doing business. And in fact, uh, you know, the, the, the news are that uh, in this kind of model, what we want to achieve is um, to have these principles embedded in the bylaws. So basically, the, the senior management has to pursue this uh, set of uh, um, common principles among the, these uh, um, enterprises. Uh, yet it has to pursue these uh, this, uh, um, principles, and the, he is accountable for the, the results. So each prin principle will have uh, uh, performance indicators. And definitely, the inclusion of uh, these uh, ethical principles will uh, bind them in terms of uh, results. So this is part of, in fact, it's a perfect uh, example. And this uh, includes also um, objectives uh, and, and, and performance indicators uh, in terms of uh, environmental uh, impact. So at the end of the, of the, of the fiscal year, the enterprises should uh, and will uh, um, uh, report about uh, the specific performance and also in uh, a number of uh, uh, environmental uh, goals and, and principles. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so f for you, Pierre, to what extent have you actually tested the model? Have, have you discussed it with some uh, large companies, with CEOs, and, and also investors? What's the uptake from the investor perspective? I think um, you should clearly differentiate because, between people who are ethical mm -hmm. and people who are not. People who are ethical will find every mean to have a proper behavior. Mm -hmm. And people who are not will find any mean to the opposite. My first thought on, 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 about your sentence is very simple. And I will answer the second fold of your question. My first thought is very simple. Today, we have certainly discovered the civil society, the international organization, government, tribunal, have discovered a growing trend in terms of corruption in the world. My perception and perception of many of, of, of people is that this is a trend which is discovered today but which has ex been existing for long. 
They did the first thing. The second thing is uh, I'm shocked personally by the fact in this new developing world environment that we, we are confronted to, you have skilly persons, skillful persons, which are just going through a rat hole for corruption, extortion, bribery. And those, uh, if you bind them ethically to reinforce the message of the regulation and legislation which are existing today, you have a better chance to slow the process of corruption, extortion, bribery, and so on. Mm. Therefore, when you speak to CEOs of major cooperation in the world, first, a person who has been in such a position has been building an industrial empire. He doesn't want his, his empire, even if it is on the nice or privately owned, to vanish. And the growing trend of new regulation may him to happen to vanish if he practice so. This is the first take. The second take is most of the big companies or mid, small and medium enterprises are confronted internationally to competition. And competition, by essence, we're absolutely, all of us, very happy about competition. But you have unfair practice in the field of competition with corruption. So when you are confronted to that, what are you doing? That's why, if you apply more universally a human-centered business model, you have a better chance that the climate will not suffer to the intrusion of the supply chain of toxic chemical product instead of safe chemical product for food security and agriculture, just as an instance. Therefore, from the general principle, which is developed by Marco today with the World Bank, you have a better chance this is certain, to have a better environment, business environment, but also a climate environment. Mm -hmm. And if you reinforce those regulations and this business model by requesting that those who are the stakeholder will apply ethical model, ethical principle on top of this, you just reinforce the chance to have a better world. Absolutely, and I, I think we're already uh, progressing along that pathway mm. in many regards. So sustainability reporting is becoming common practice. Every major corporation needs to do that, and they're being judged accordingly. Um, investors are taking sustainability reporting a lot more seriously. Just from a climate change perspective, uh, the We Mean Business Coalition, for example, um, is a coalition of, of forward-thinking companies who all together account to about 23 trillion in net worth. 23 trillion, that's a sizable amount of influence. Right. And that includes companies like Apple and Unilever and Google and, and the likes. And a lot of them have also committed to going 100% renewable energy. So they're setting up the targets of environmental um, practices. And similarly, they're setting up social targets. Um, what I find really interesting with your human-centered business model is that you've got a, a much stronger ethical component. And it'll be interesting to actually hear from you, how do you aim to um, validate that? How do you aim to make sure that it is being monitored and also being um, reported so that you know the the, the consumer um, individuals as well as the investors are able to make their decisions accordingly. Have you put much thought into that yet? 
Yes, very, very briefly. Uh, uh, first of all, the, the model needs to be uh, developed. Uh, so right now what we put together is a, is a proposal. Uh, as I said, uh, this is a large uh, um, endeavor, and we have more than 46 uh, right now, 46 uh, uh, international DRM uh, uh, partners uh, from other international organizations to um, universities and think tanks. Uh, uh, we have uh, the, some representatives of the uh, business sector uh, as well, because it needs to be uh, also uh, realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, we will uh, definitely develop uh, um, uh, a set of um, some mechanisms to to make sure that uh, the, the the quality of the um, performances will be uh, clear measured. So we cannot leave just to to the um, uh, enterprise to self evaluate uh, uh, their own uh, uh, results. So. Um, we have, uh, you know, s of course, uh, several options for this. We have to keep in mind, um, as I said uh, at, the, at the beginning, that uh, the model should be um, a model that uh, is realistically uh, applicable and tailored uh, uh, to different uh, uh, socioeconomic uh, situations. So um, we probably will uh, will have a kind of menu of uh, of options in in some uh, countries uh, we may have uh, a much stronger um, validation in other countries uh, it will be uh, we, ha we have to to identify you know di different uh, uh, forms uh, certainly the governance structure uh, will be uh, very different from the uh, Current uh, govern, governance uh, structures of uh, of existing uh, uh, for profit and, and uh, no profit because we need to include in the governance uh, uh, the the voice of uh, a number of um, stakeholders. Uh, so um, I, I foresee this uh, to be a very exciting, uh, challenging uh, uh, project. Uh, uh, we will certainly uh, be subject to uh, strong critics, but uh, it's good uh, because we will. Uh, this will help us to to refine and to make a you know a good uh, model, and and then uh, we are planning to uh, once the model will be developed uh, to uh, in collaboration with some uh, governments to pilot this. Uh, and again, of course, this will be a, a voluntary adoption, so there will be no uh, imposition. It's uh, just a. Uh, one alternative way of uh, doing business that uh, entrepreneurs can uh, can uh, decide to to use in their uh, new enterprises or in uh, uh, modifying and, and um, uh, their current uh, business. Mm. There is a huge demand. There there are many many uh, different uh, initiatives, uh, but there is uh, so far what we we. We, we think is that there is not one initiative that is taking into consideration all these dif uh, different uh, aspects: uh, the procurement, uh, the financial, uh, you know, sustainability, and so financial instruments, uh, the governance, the legal uh, uh, structure, and uh, the relationship between uh, the enterprise and the local communities. So, uh, including the, for the envi environment. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I would like to thank you very, very much for this opportunity, uh, and uh, we'll be glad in the future to uh, keep you posted on uh, on the developments uh, of this uh, project. We'll have uh, uh, other presentations of, of this, and of course, uh, fundraising, because uh, uh, in order to implement the project, we'll uh, need uh, funds. Um, and um, I would like to thank you very much for this opportunity. Absolutely. No, thank you, Marco, and, and thank you, Pierre. Uh, we're running a little bit tight on time, so I was just wondering if there's one quick question from the audience. We've got one in the back there. And, and after that, I think we're going to have to wrap up. It's on? Oh. My name is Phil, and as far as religion goes, my uncle, he's a pilot. He flies a triple sevens and he lives in Abu Dhabi. As far as religion goes and climate change, how would you integrate people to be more concerned and with religion growth as well? Thank you, Phil. I think you're raising 
a point which is essential. And today, um, after suddenly half century of perception of that relations are fading in uh, uh, on the earth, we have suddenly understood for the past 20, 25 years that people, the world population, is more attracted to follow a faith than we thought after the Second World War. That is the first uh, take that I, 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 I must have in mind when I'm, con when I'm conducting a comparative theological uh, analysis. And today, um, there is, in my view, two growing trends to answer, Phil, your precise question. The first trend for the past 100 years is a growing trend of new rules in international public law that international organizations are responsible to construe stone by stone to just have, in my view, a better world. The second growing trend, the new growing trend, as I said, is a new growing trend of faith on Earth. Because when I conducted for Marco this study, I acknowledge that 75% of world population was made of believers. Therefore, I think those two trends will, for instance, avoid fragile state to fold completely, because the international community is going to assist those fragile states. Sorry, yeah, Max. We, I'm, we, I'm very French. I'm talkative. I know. We've run out of time, and Marco has to run off to a meeting. I want, just want to thank you so very much, Marco. I want to thank you, Pierre. Uh, you've heard it from them. Uh, we can learn from our ethical uh, religions and, and it, include them in our business models, make sure that the law is in line with the ethics, and, sure. and make sure that we all work together to have a much better world to live in. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thank you very much, Max. Bye.